Hello, STEM enthusiasts, and welcome to Scientix TV. We're on the first month of the 2024 STEM Discovery campaign, and we're off to a very good start. On this episode, we're going to tell you how to participate, submit your activities. We're going to show some experiences from our STEM Discovery campaign experts, and of course, an experiment. And today, we're going to show you how to power small batteries using lemons. Scientix is all about fostering innovation in the classroom as well as collaboration. So we're very excited to share today on Scientix News about an initiative that covers both aspects. We're going to be talking to Barbara, the project manager of STEAM Learning Ecologies, SLEs. Hi, Barbara. Welcome back uh, to Scientix TV. Where are you? Hi, Agueda, and everyone watching. Yes, I'm at uh, Beyond the Classroom. Rethinking STEAM Education Conference in Brussels, organized by the Author Project and the OS Together Network. And I'm here representing the STEAM Learning Ecologies Project. So what's the OS Learning uh, Together Network? This is the Open Schooling Together Network. It's an initiative that brings together different uh, open schooling European funded projects that uh, meet regularly to create new collaboration, uh, exchange ideas and share the results of their initiatives. So it like, looks like a perfect fit for the STEAM learning ecologies. Now, I also heard that you have a pretty special announcement on that front. Yes, the SLEs project uh, builds open schooling partnerships between different uh, key stakeholders, among them schools, universities, community actors, uh, museum and museums and many others to offer uh, science learning opportunities for all citizens. And we are very happy to invite you all, all um, anyone who is interested in STEAM education and open schooling to join the STEAM Learning Ecologies community. Well, it sounds like the SLEs community is a very exciting opportunity for anyone interested, well, in open schooling and breaking down the walls between schools and the real world. By joining the community, you will receive updates on the uh, project uh, activities and results. You will have the opportunity to participate in uh, <clears throat> workshops and events on the topic. And you will join um, a great uh, network of uh, STEAM education and open schooling enthusiasts from all over Europe. It seems we are starting now, so Thanks for calling, and I hope to see many people joining the SLEs community. Well, thanks, Barbara, and don't be late. Uh, now, to join the SLEs community, you have to go to steamecologies.eu, where you can fill in a form, and then you'll start getting news from the SLEs, and will be on your way to be part of the SLEs community. The STEM Discovery campaign is an exciting time for teachers and education professionals as they get the chance to share what they do, their activities, learn from each other and find inspiration on how to improve their STEM classes. During the last STEM discovery campaigns, we found a few of those educators that had the best initiatives. They were very active and we have selected them as the 2024 STEM discovery campaign experts. These experts have been sharing tips and suggestions with everybody through different social media channels. I have participated in the STEM Discovery campaign since its first year. Participating in these activities is an incredible opportunity for myself and my students. Participare alla STEM Discovery campaign 2024 vi farà sentire parte di una grande e importante comunità di eclettici educatori europei che amano innovare nell'insegnamento. The STEM Discovery campaign is an unparalleled opportunity to enhance your skills as a STEM educator. The SDC is an investment in our profession and in the future of our students. I have only one suggestion about the STEM Discovery Campaign. Participate! Participate and feel these positive vibes! The SDC experts have a lot to share about how to make your activity engaging for others. That's why we organized two events with them, a webinar and an online workshop. Today, we have two of the experts joining us to give you a bit of a preview. Hi, Emma. We are so glad to have you here today. 
Uh, so you got to share your experience with others during the webinar. Can you tell us more about it? Hi, Sidora. Hi, everybody. Uh, we hosted a webinar on the 20th of February. The recording is available online. It was a roundtable discussion. Uh, all the five ACDC experts, and so also including me, uh, we shared our experience in uh, submitting uh, the entries for the STEM discovery campaign in the past, of course. And what did the participants get out of it? Uh, we shared all the details uh, about our entries uh, to help the participants uh, uh, to um, in encounter, to meet all of the uh, necessary requirements uh, uh, to participate in the challenge in the competition. We provided also um, some tips uh, and tricks uh, uh, to help the uh, participants uh, to submit uh, in a proper way uh, and to give uh, to make all the process uh, not stressful but very smooth, very uh, very easy. Uh, we inspired also uh, the participants in the webinar to use the Scientix repository um, that is so rich and so full of uh, very important resources. Um, the participants um, uh, could also ask, uh, ask questions uh, just to clarify any doubt uh, they could have uh, about uh, the competition. Oh, amazing. That sounds very good. Thank you very much, Emma. Hi, Teresita. Welcome to you too. So you and the other SDC experts are also participating in Science Project Online Workshop. What will that be about? Okay, the Science uh, Project Online Workshop, it's an online workshop that lasts three weeks. So we have three sessions, once per week, uh, two uh, about one hour and a half and one about one hour. And during the session, uh, the participant um, will explore and experience and on activity and collaborate each other. And uh, very important, the workshop are free and open to all. So what will participants experience in this special SDC SPA? Okay, during uh, the online workshop, the participant will learn how to use some scientific material and how to bring innovation in their classroom. They learn also how to collaborate um, between them and also how to improve their STEM discovery campaign entry and also how to include ICT into their uh, teaching and how to bring STEM into no STEM uh, classroom. It, I think it will be really exciting and practical. That sounds very exciting. Uh, we're really looking forward to seeing you both during this path. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks to experts, uh, to our experts for sharing their experience. Now, if you want inspiration, uh, make sure to head out to the to scientists.eu where you can find the webinar and how to register on the to the online workshop. And of course, let us know when you sign up and pin the activity in the STEM Discovery campaign map. Today on Science in Action, we have Vasiliki Tomara, a physics, chemistry, and geography secondary school teacher from Greece, who, share with us, who will share with us a science demonstration titled Lemonade Potential, where we will power a small battery using lemons. This demonstration can be performed with students between 13 and 17 years old. Welcome, Asiliki. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, having me on Scientix TV. Today, I'm going to present you a hands-on uh, hands uh, activity uh, where uh, we are going to use lemon to build batteries in order to electrify small uh, uh, devices, electric devices, uh, that need low voltage um, in the classroom. The materials we will need are lemons, some uh, galvanized nails or screws. The bigger the surface of the screws, the better it will work. Some copper pennies, uh, some wires with crocodile clips. The devices we want to power. Here I've got some LED lights. And also we will need a multimeter and uh, a knife. So we take one lemon, the first lemon, and we stick in it on the one side the, the screw, the galvanized screw. Galvanized screw uh, means that it's covered, the, the, the outer uh, layer of the, the screw is covered with the zinc. 
And on the other side, I cut a little slot here. And I stick in a couple of copper coins. And this is our lemon battery. So now, if I use a multimeter to measure if there is any voltage, uh, zero point ninety six uh, volts. That is approximately one volt. So, in order to electrify a LED light, we need the three volts. And to make it work, we will need to connect four lemon buttons. Let's make the other ones. So, in this battery, the zinc is a negative pole and the copper is a positive pole. In order to have a, a three volt uh, battery, we need to, more than three volts battery, we need to connect, to connect those four lemon batteries in series. So I set it up in a zinc to copper pattern so that I can easily connect the poles of the separate lemons with the wires with the crocodile clips. So I connect the first lemon's copper with the second lemon's zinc. And now if I use the multimeter again, I hope I will have voltage more than, bigger than three volts. Let's see. And yes, it is 3.7. So I, I, I use an, another uh, wire with a crocodile clip from the copper side. This is, if uh, we set the positive pole, and this is a negative pole. And I take the, the leg light. So the leg light has two, has two legs. The shorter one, the shorter leg, must uh, be connected to the zinc electrode, and the le longer leg, leg to the copper. And yes, it works. Let's make clear that there is no electricity in the lemon. The lemon has no electricity in it. So what, what causes the, electric, uh, the electricity that lets the light shine? To begin with, when we stick the, the zinc uh, screw into the lemon, a reaction starts to happen between the citric acid of the lemon and the zinc in the nail. This reaction produces zinc ions and electrons. And those electrons react with the hydrogen um, ions from the citric acid solution to produce gas hydrogen. So why do we need the penis? By adding the penis in, and the wire, we provide a secondary path for the electrons to move from zinc to the copper and back into the lemon so that they can react with the hydrogen ions. So this makes, creates the electricity that comes through the cable and which can electrify the LED lights or the computer. And that's how it works. I hope you liked my experiment. Thank you. Thank you, Vasiliki, for sharing this experiment. If you also want to share your your science demonstrations with other teachers, you can do so by using a form on Scientix portal. You can decide if you want to present yourself or we can do it for you. Agata, did you know that watching Scientix TV episode, you can put on a SDC map? Like just watching it? Yes, and you can also provide feedback. Like if they like it? Yes. If they don't like it? Of course. So I guess they have to provide comments? Comments some reviews, fill in some surveys maybe, a lot of things. So you go to your phone, you open, of course, your STEM Discovery Campaign app. There you first need to log in. There you enter your EON ID credentials and a password in order to access the submission form. We're all logged in, we see the submission form. First, we need to add our email. 
You can use your school email, you can use your private email, preferably the school one. Then you need to agree to the terms and conditions that you agree to your data to be processed and so on. And you need to agree that you want to be considered for the scientific awards, of course. The category then, we need to choose what type of activity we perform. In our case, we'll put, I watched and commented an episode on Scientix TV, and we will select the topic. So last episode was about integrated STEM teaching and STEM careers. So we selected those two topics. The title, we will add the title of the Scientix TV episode, and then in the description, we write our comment. Then we select the country. They write down the town, the city they are watching the episode from, and of course, the address. We suggest using always the school address. We have the age group, so we need to decide for whom the episode was. In our case, it was for adults, so we will put 19 plus as an age group. The start and end date, we will just put in when we watch the Stantix TV episode and the language of the comment and the website. You can put the website of the Scientix TV episode. You can include the image of the Scientix TV episode or of your school. If you don't include an image, it's also okay. It will have the STEM Discovery Campaign logo on it for sure. When it comes to the total number of participants, you need to write how many people watched with you. If you watched it alone, you would just write one and then zero number of teachers. Or if you're a teacher, you write one. Or if there are no students, you write zero students. If there are many students watching with you, you write all the students that watched. And click submit the entry. Nice. Oh, oh okay. Um, Isidora, I think you've inspired quite a few people that are watching. Well, that's our goal, sir. Make sure to submit your entry. And of course, don't forget to check different Scientix awards. You may have to use certain resources or some templates or conduct specific activities. Maybe even draft an entry to be eligible for multiple Scientix awards. So go to Scientix portal and STEM Discovery Campaign app and check what different Scientix award is looking for. Thank you very much for joining us and thank you very much to our speakers today. Uh, we'll be back next time with the latest on STEM education. And thank you very much, Isidora, for joining us one more time. Uh, see you again next time. We will see. So thank you again. See you next time on Scientix TV, where we see the world through STEM glasses. <laughs>